Hey guys, and welcome. My name's NG Paradox, and we are playing the new version of the Game of Thrones mod for CK2. That is correct. This is the new version of uh, Game of Thrones mod. This means it now works perfectly with the Reaper's Jew. So if you did not know that, go download it right now and check it out. Now for this new series, I thought we'd do something a little bit fun, a little bit different, maybe an extremely short series. I don't even know if this is able to be won, but we're playing as Beric Dondarrion of the Brotherhood Without Banners. That is correct, we're playing as the Brotherhood Without Banners, a, a group that I really like. In the books, and the, not as much a TV show, but mainly in the books, I really love Beric Dondarrion. One of my favorite characters, one of my favorite side characters on the books. And I'll talk about why later, but I thought it would be fun to play as them just to celebrate the new version of the mod. I wanted to jump right into something, get something done to show you guys that the new version was out. So I thought doing a short series where maybe we'll probably just get completely destroyed will be fun to showcase it and, and see what we can do. Because I do want to try them out, personally myself. Now of course if you're new to my series and my channel, uh, you may not know but I generally roleplay when I play these games. This means that I will make decisions based upon my character, so usually I help with the traits. That helps me to make the decisions I make when it comes to events and how we go about winning the game, in a way. Now, of course, we do know Beric Dondarrion a little bit from the book, so I will base it probably from what we know from the books. And, of course, I will make mistakes. So if you guys think I make a decision wrong, you think he would not do that, please tell me in the comment section. I'd love to hear it. help me to improve in the future. But personally for myself, um, that's just maybe how I see the character. So it could just be a difference when it comes to the characters. That is obviously a difficult part of the thing, you know. He's written them, you know, J.R.R. Martin has written the characters quite well. And so some of them can be debatable and we can see them in different ways. But I hope you guys enjoy. So let's jump right in. Lord Beric, I declare that my brother Robert left no trueborn issues of his body. The boy Joffrey, the boy Tommen, and the girl Marcel being abominations of incest between Cersei Lannister and Sir Jaime the Kingslayer. By right of birth and blood, I do lay claim to the Iron Throne. Let all true men declare their loyalty. Signed, Stannis of House Baratheon, and blah 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 blah. Of course, I should have known. Well, Beric obviously won't say all lies, of course. He probably, you know, he's fine for Rob Baratheon, the law, and whatnot, so we'll go for this for now. We're kind of against the Lannisters and stuff. Uh, and here we go. This can show you a little bit about Beric himself. I am Beric Dondarrion, leader of the Brotherhood Without Banners. Side by side with my men, and with the Lord of Light watching over me, I will bring ruin to the Lannisters. In the name of our true king, Robert Baratheon, even in his death, we are outlaws, thieves, and brigands in the eyes of the nobles, but in the eyes of the small folk and peasants, we are the givers of hope and a force to restore the peace that existed under King Robert. The Brotherhood of our Banners shall be victorious. Here's one thing to say, actually. Uh, you know, you can, you can talk about the bad points about Robert Baratheon, but the times were peaceful underneath him. That, that's, I guess, one thing he did well. Maybe because he didn't do too much when it comes to being a king. Maybe that's what helped. Who knows? But yes, Beric is trying to bring law and justice to these troubled lands. The Riverlands has just become... A horrible place where peasants are killed, women are raped, and there's no justice. Beric is here to do that, so we're fighting against the Lannisters, the Brotherhood Rebellion. We must fight King Joffrey, the young boy king, who has already shown in his, his young age that he is a bastard in sheep's clothing. Pardon the pun. But yeah, so we're going to be fighting against him 10,000 men, though of course he has Tywin and Mace on his side, thanks to the marriage of Marjorie Tyrell. So we're in a real difficult position. I'm not sure if this is even winnable. This could be just one episode, this whole series. So the reason I want to do that is because I thought, you know, just I wanted to show the new version of the mod. There will be another series, which will be the proper long series. This is trying to, just a quick thing for fun because I wanted to play as them. So let's look at who we are. Beric Dondarrion. Uh, of course, he's a lord of the Stormlands. He actually would be the lord of Blackhaven. But he was sent by Stark to go... I guess give justice to the mountain when he came to the Riverlands. Obviously because he's a lord and I guess he is... He's a young lord though I guess. He doesn't have that much history when it comes to leading men possibly. But obviously you know, being a lord he can command the men so maybe as being a Stormland lord maybe he trusted him more than some of the other lords. But he sent him on his way. We didn't really know much about him. But obviously he's been brought back to life. 
He is patient, he's temperate, authoritative, just, and diligent. At least that's what the modders think. So I, I, I kind of agree with most of those things. He's favoured by Roller. Um, he's resurrected, of course. He's scarred. He is trained fighter. And he is attractive. Huh. For some reason, I don't remember him being mentioned to be attractive. Actually, wait, no. Actually, I think I do. I remember the tawny, I think. Sansa and a friend were talking about the different knights. I think maybe Jane mentions Beric. That might have been something. Or maybe I'm just making that up. I feel like I remember someone mentioning him being attractive or something. So maybe that is true, yeah. But yeah, obviously if you've not watched Game of Thrones or read the books, please do not watch any further. There will be spoilers completely in this series, so please do not watch any further. I, I must, I, I cannot say no less than that. Go read the books, go watch the TV shows, they're great, and you can find out for yourself, and then come back. I I'll be here waiting. This video, he'll be there for any time you can come back. But yeah, so obviously he was resurrected by a Forest of Maya, uh, the Red Priest. He, he didn't really... I think Forrest, Forrest is a really interesting character. I, I really like both of these characters. I really like the storyline they have, actually. The fact that he was kind of sent to bring Robert to kind of, you know, maybe come to the Lord of Light, but obviously he was a bit of a drinker, so him and Robert got along quite well, but he, knew, he never really maybe believed in the Lord of Light until he met Beric. And when Beric died, basically, at the hands of the mountain, Forrest found when he tried to breathe the life back into him, Beric came back to life. And that's what's so cool about him. He came back to life. Uh, they say by the Lord of Light. That's what Forrest says. Obviously, it's debatable. We can obviously conclude that it makes sense. It was the Lord of Light that brought him back to life. That makes the most sense. But then again, we really have no idea what brought him back to life. I mean, why was Forrest able to do this this time? He's never been able to do it before. And there's never been any you know, history of someone being able to do this. So it's a really interesting thing. And obviously, Beric can light his sword on fire. Which obviously makes you think of Azor Ahai, uh, Reborn. But obviously, Beric cannot be him. That would be really crazy. Personally, I love that idea. I love the idea. Um, actually, I'll talk about this in a second. We'll get our men to start the move. Now, I really have no tactic here. Because there's not much we can do. We only have 3,000 men. The only thing I can think of is we need to get money and hire more soldiers. That's the only thing I can think of. So let's go through our group. Castellan, we'll put Lem. Lemon Cloak, Justice Seer, we'll put my sister. Or Jack. Let's put Jack. And of course, no Maester. So I want to be able to see what's going on in the world. None of these guys can really do much. So I could get you. Actually, let's put someone else then. Let's put my sister. She's going to go so descent. I'm going to send her to, the Iron, uh, to King's Landing. So we can see what's going on here. It could be very useful for us. We basically need the other people to defeat the Lannisters. I don't know what happens if other people win. Do we fight them then? Or what happens? Like, if we win, what happens? I really have no idea what's meant to happen if I win. I didn't think about that, but we can see, I guess. Enforced demands. Uh, limited realm authority becomes Lord Beric's new liege. Whether to depose King Joffrey in favour of Prince Tommen. Huh. I don't know. What happens if we offer white peace? Am I, I have no idea what's going to happen here. So we're going to have to play and see what happens. Could be interesting. I also can send her. Sabotage economy. Build spy network. Let's do that one. Yeah, let's go do that one. We're going to put in Harren Hall so we can kind of see around here as well. Those two places are obviously important for me. We're going to have to look around there. Other than that, that is fine. Ambition. Now, if I was playing a game, I would obviously pick have a son because I want to roleplay. I feel like he just wants to win the war. I think Beric just wants to win, end this fighting, end this war. Of course, we're going to go for war as well. Uh, we need some generals. So we'll go for Jack, and that's it. Let's have a quick look at the, count, the, the court we have. I want to see who's in our court. Let's see who it is from the Brotherhood about Banners in here. We, of course, have my sister. We have Forrest of Maya, who's my friend. Harwin. Ah, yes, Harwin. The Northerner. Ah. Try to look after Arya, but she just, you know, Arya just... She, she's a pain sometimes. You know, she's just a little girl. But she was a pain sometimes during the storyline with the Brotherhood Without Banners. You know, you can see it from her point of view. Maybe, you know, the Brotherhood aren't completely good. It's a very difficult line. I thought it was an interesting storyline, actually. That's one reason I like them as well. 
Uh, Lem, Lem, Lemon Cloak, obviously, with his yellow cloak. Jack be lucky. Ugh. It's bringing back good memories. Leobolds. And Illyria, my wife, Illyria Dane. Oh, they've changed this. I don't recognize from that before. That looks like that's changed to a circle. And, of course, Gendry the bull. I like the fact he's with us. That's cool. We have Gendry with us. Obviously, he has no claim to the Iron Throne. He is just a bastard, and no one knows that he's really Robert's son, most likely. And, of course, you know, he, even if he, everyone did know he was Robert's son, he has no better claim than anyone else. He's just a bastard, so... That is a shame, but I like the fact he's in the game, of course, in the mod. It's just those little details that go far for me. Okay. And here we go. So let's make a strategy. Um, probably, we're going to stay out of it, I think. Yeah, we're going to stay here for now. I'm going to just wait to see what Rob Stark does. What Rob Stark does, and of course, Stance Baratheon is going to make a big difference to us. If they can win, that can really help us. If they can destroy the armies. I would like to take Karen Hall. 2,000 men there. That could be really nice. Obviously, capturing Joffrey would win us the war. It's probably the only way we can win. He is in King's Landing. But there's 5,000 men defenders. We do need more men. That is one thing. So we're going to keep our men back for now. We'll see what happens. But as I was saying, I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section. I always love... I don't know why. I, I'm a sucker for the unexpected. And I always hate everyone's favorite characters and stuff. I like the side characters the most. I really love the idea that Beric would have been, you know, uh, a Saar High Reborn, and he was, you know, the, the man that was promised, because, uh, you know, he came back to life, he has a sword of... Oh, you guys are suffering attrition. He has a sword, you know, made of fire. I thought it would have been really cool. Obviously, it's not going to be him, but I would have thought it would have been hilarious. I would have personally loved that, though I know many people would have hated that. So I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments section. Do you think it's pretty... Would it be cool? If a very unexpected character turned out to be the hero, or would you hate this? Now, Terex have turned to See, some of the Riverland Lords, they don't realize I'm here to help the Riverland people. They don't realize. Oh, we should probably put her in charge, Taya. She's actually really good. So she should be in charge. Uh, Thoros, you'll go that side. And I guess we'll get Harwin or me. I guess we'll put me. And we're going to put me on this side. So us three are going to be leading. He's a brave man. I think Beric would lead on the front lines. But I want to know what you think. Would that be really cool? Would you like that? Was that unexpectedness kind of a nice thing? Or do you think that's just silly and it would ruin the story for you? Because a character you don't know as well or doesn't seem like a hero would turn out to be the hero. I'd love to know what you guys think on that. A sacrificial burning as an offering to the Lord of Light will gain me much favor with him according to the Red Priest. The unbelievers I rule would not like it though. Sacrifice some commoners from the dungeon. I defied the Lord of Light's cruelty. Yeah, I don't think we would do that. I would lose favor by Roller. I, I don't think Beric would kill people, though. I really don't think he would. I'm, I'm, I'm sad this event popped up. We, have, we see we lost favor by Roller, but there's not much we can do. Yeah, we can look into the flames. That's a shame. I didn't want that event to pop up. I knew it could pop up. I didn't want it to, but... There's nothing we can do about that. They're going downwards, so we'll stay here for now. How many men does Wickham have? 800. I could go take that, actually. Let's go take that. Yeah, let's go attack Wickham. Yeah. This could be a good opportunity, actually. This could get us some money, possibly. History is a subject that has always fascinated you, and you have spent the last few weeks studying the campaigns of King Christopher Mud, the Hammer of Justice. There are many lessons to be learned from how he fought 100 battles against the invading Andals, losing only one. Our marshal goes up. Okay, so we're going to fight. We can fight these here. We can defeat them, so that's good. I can get some war score, possibly, though very small. Uh, obviously, there is a kind of weird thing to Beric's story. He kind of seems like a random character. That's this really cool thing. Is he important? Probably not. But I think the fact he has the kind of the breath of fire, as they call it, that will be important. As we know in the books, the books and TV show are slightly diverged a little bit on this, on the TV show. He still has it in the books. Um, he does not have that. I think what happens is that maybe the breath of fire will pass on to the hero. So the man who will be the hero, it will pass on to them. Let's go flat to rings. I don't know what will happen here. Who, How many men we have and stuff. But I think whoever gets that, it will pass to them. And they 
will be the hero. So, for example, I think maybe Jamie. It could be Jamie Lannister. Maybe Jamie Lannister will die or something, and they breathe in the breath of fire into him, and it brings him back to life. And he suddenly has these, you know, he can come back to life, and he has the sword Lightbringer, and he faces off against the White Walkers with it. That'd be kind of a really cool redemption kind of arc for him, which he's already been going through and stuff. Ooh, the... What happened to the Reach? Where did the Reach go? Huh? <gasps> Oh, Mace! What happened to Mace? Mace died in battle against Stannis Baratheon. Stannis Baratheon, he killed his brother with a... What would they say he killed his brother? And now he's killed Mace Tyrell on the battlefield. His family is... Can you imagine Loras? Oh, the, I love that. They've actually got in their titles from Renly's... Uh, Rainbow Guard. That is awesome. The Knight of Flowers. Did he always have that? Did the others have that? I want to check, but I can't remember who... Who had it. Maybe it wasn't one of you. I, can't, I know it was like... Uh, I can't remember where they are, though. Oh, well, we'll have to kind of look for that later, I guess. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to find out who it was. I'm going to be searching for ages to find the different guys. Oh, well, but that's fine. That was interesting. We can definitely take this. We can even assault this, which is really nice. So I'm going to assault this. We lost a few men, but it's fine. We've captured some high-value prisoners. That could give us some... Uh, that could give us some uh, ransom. 70 gold. Oh, that is awesome. So actually, this has gone really well for us. They've lost the reach, which is massive. For some reason... Willis is not willing to help. Why is this, Willis? What is going on with you? You're married to a Lannister. So why would you not want to join? Hmm. Don't know what's going on with them. Now, it looks like the Lannisters are fighting some enemies here. They are defeating them. How's the war going for you, Stannis? It's only just started, but he's on 10%. Obviously, getting rid of the Reach was a big thing for him. And, of course, for the North as well. It's good for all of us, really. But I'm definitely going to sell him. I have to, don't I? We need that 70 gold. The cook complained to me about my courtier Gendry's temper tantrums. Apparently he punched her son in the face again. The kid shows spirit. Hmm, I don't think we'll like that. That's not just. Beat him into being calm. Would he beat him? Again, that's not just. Encourage him to be more patient. Pray for his soul. Hmm... I think we'd encourage him to be more patient. I don't think we'd beat it out of him, would we? Nah, I don't think we'd do that. Encourage him to be more patient. We'll give him a chance. He has gained the patient. Good job there, Gendry. You're going to be a fine young man. I wish we could force train him, actually. We can capture this as well, but we can't just assault this. There we go. 138 gold. Now, that's not going to be enough, really, to get many mercenaries. We're going to need at least 150. I guess I could get some alone from the Iron Bank, though. We could hire 1,120. That's a lot of men. We probably want 1,500, though. Yeah, 1,500 added to this. 4,500. Not enough to take King's Landing. But it's getting close. So let's just keep taking this. Let's see if we can get any more prisoners and stuff. I will try and go for Harrenhal. Though I'm a bit worried where the armies are. We should look at where Rob is, actually. That should help. I'm going to have to try and do a lot of logistics here, because, you know, a lot of things are going to change, and that can affect what we do. Uh, what are the Greyjoys doing? Of course they're attacking the north. Ah, Balon. You seem to have a very interesting moustache there. You did not have that moustache before, from what I remember. <laughs> what? The they both got moustaches now? Neither of them had those moustaches before. And there's one thing I did hear about. Euron Crow's eye now has Valerian steel armor. That is awesome. That's an awesome trait. I, I wonder if other people can get that. I don't know if anyone can. Maybe it's just a special thing for him. It'd be cool if other people could, though. How can I rely on my generals when their understanding of warfare is so lacking compared to my own? I could teach Forrest a thing or two. Well, of course I would. Flat terrain. Ah... Of course, Holy Warrior, yes, we should teach him that. So there we go, another good thing for us. The old 
Torgan Flint. Torgan Flint is fighting me? Forrest greatly accepted my lesson on the art of war. With more generals like me, who can stand against me? Excellent. So that, those are some really good things we've had so far. Now, how many men do you... No, it's not you, is it? It is you. 1,000. He can't beat us. So if he just came from the north, it wouldn't have a big effect. You're in antlers. Okay. We'll stay up here for now. Hopefully, they are too busy. Ooh, Stannis. You have 10,000 men, but you're not leading any men. But as I said before, though, I, I really like Beric as a character. I think he's a good man. He's an interesting character. He has, like, a really random thing for, like, a side character to have that's really powerful but intriguing and makes you question where the story's going. And it could end up being important. A lot of people feel like it's kind of really random and a waste of time, his character, because of the whole breath of fire and he's been resurrected and so they feel like why does he have it? it I mean if it has no point and it does not add to the overall story I actually don't mind I, I like the fact that maybe some things are red herons I actually don't mind that if it turned out to be a red heron I would love that that makes it all the more intriguing to me but if it doesn't I could see that I could see it like I say for being Jamie or something but that's just my my opinions for the future that could possibly be what happens we have no idea yet my ward, Edric, is a charitable little rascal. He just gave his newest toy to the smith's son. Isn't that lovely? He's turned out well. I think he'd like that. Because obviously we do know Jamie is in the Riverlands. And of course he is just been taken in the books by Brienne. So, that is an interesting thing. Thank you all. We will make sure your warriors do you proud. Ooh, the siege of Wickham's finished and the peasants of the area are very grateful and sympathetic to your fight against the throne. Many of them have offered to come with you and join the Brotherhood of Outbound. That is awesome. I did not know this could happen. So we've got more men. we now got 150 gold, so we could get 1,500 men. We're also going to assault that. There we go. No more men came with us. We'll keep just taking this. We might as well. It doesn't give me much, but if we go down south, we can see there's 10,000 men. We need their armies to get more defeated. Hey guys, sorry about that, there will be a cut hit in the video, my recording software just crashed, I do apologise, that sort of thing can happen sometimes, but we're going to end this part here, I think this is a good place to end it, there's a lot of uncertainty happening here, we've actually had some good luck here, because Wickham actually went against me, that actually gave me a really good opportunity, I was a little bit worried about going near the Westerlands, because of the, the amount of men Tywin commands, 33,000, and of course he has ice with him. Jamie is still locked up, so there's a lot of things that can happen here. We can see what happens. We'll look at what happens to the other characters. If we will make some important characters and keep an eye on the story, what's going on here. Um, I really didn't think we'd actually get this far, so I'm quite happy for now. But who knows how long our luck will last. It will probably end at some point soon, and we'll lose. But yeah, I hope you guys will join me then. I'd love to hear about your guys' thoughts about the things I talked about. You know, what do you think about the character Beric? Do you think he's a really interesting character? Do you think that it's kind of nice to have these interesting side characters that maybe don't play that much into the roles of the series? Obviously, he had a big effect on Arya because obviously he kind of helps her, but I, I really like that. I love just the intrigue of side characters. Personally, for me, I love side characters. They're always my favorite characters. Beric is actually one of my favorite characters in the series. Now, I'm sure most of you would not agree with that, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Brotherhood Without Banners. Do you think the Brotherhood Without Banners are a good group? Do you think the work they do is a good thing? Or do you think they're, they're just hypocrites? They're just as bad as the people they fight against and, and whatnot. It is a really interesting kind of concept of how the war affects normal people. And kind of what they stand for is really interesting. They're kind of standing for justice of King Robert. But King Robert's dead. But that's what Beric was sent to do. Is he kind of being, is he kind of being just stubborn about it all? Should he really pick a side? It's a really just interesting kind of part of the story, which I really loved. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think. I hope you guys will join us next time for see if the Brotherhood can, you know, push on. Possibly, I don't think so. But let's just keep our faith in the Lord of Light. Maybe He is looking down upon us, even though I'm no longer favored. That was unlucky. That was one unlucky thing. But I'll see you in the next part.